Hi, I'm Kevin Klein, City Councilor for Charleswood, Tuxedo Westwood. I recently uh, appeared before the Standing Policy Committee on Property Planning and Development. We call it PPND for short. I wanted to talk about the Future Services Account. Now, I became aware of the Future Services Account a few months ago uh, because unbeknownst to me, we've been digging into some issues for residents uh, in Charleswood, Tuxedo Westwood, trying to get some work done. And then out of the blue, we discovered an account called the Future Services Account that nobody has ever made us aware of, nobody has ever spoken of for it seems like 40 years. And over the 40 years, people have been putting money into this account at the request of the city. This is unbelievable. Millions of dollars in there. Now the city has held on to this money for the most part. Um, I call it a 40-year uh, interest-free loan. What happened to all that interest, you might ask? Well, the city has taken the interest and put it towards general revenues. They've used it. Some of the jobs were done, a lot of them weren't. And that interest has just gone to the, the city. That's an interest-free loan. It truly is an interest-free loan. So there's a lot of work in there that needs to be done. In fact, the majority of the projects fall within Charleswood Tuxedo Westwood. I don't want to get into how did this happen, who did this, what, you know, how can this happen, let's, let's have a, an, uh, an inquiry, all that stuff. It's not surprising. And I guarantee you, it's not the only one. And you know it. You know it and I know it. It's not the only account that's probably fallen through the cracks over all these years. First and foremost, people have paid to have that work done. I do not want to hear, well, now we don't have enough money to do that. Too bad. You have taken the money from the interest. You failed to meet your contractual obligations. So you will have to put the money in there in 2021 and complete every one of those jobs, period. There's no question about this. There should be no discussion about this. It's gone to the budget working group, the mayor, EPC plus three. Why? It's black and white. Put the money over there and finish the work in 2021. You have had plenty of time. First and foremost, do the work we were supposed to do because we were contractually obligated to do. I heard the public service or a few members say they believe the problem was that the uh, property planning was taking money from the residents for this work because what would happen, somebody wants to build a house, the city would say, well, you're going to have to put $20,000, you're going to have to give us $20,000 because we're going to have to do the road or we're going to have to do curbs, or we're going to have to put in new lighting, or we're going to have to do this. They do the same thing to developers. So they pay that fee and the city keeps it. And they've kept it for 40 years in some cases. And they said, oh, the problem was is that PP&D was taking the money, but they weren't telling uh, Public Works who would do the work. <laughs> Look, anybody who's ever worked in an organization as, an, as a manager, has any experience, and, and I, I get that mo most colleagues that I have don't have that experience. You can't work in silos. Like, why is it that someone can take a building permit for a deck or a fence or a hot tub from PP&D, and moments later, somebody from property tax knows, and they're sending you a new assessment on your property? because the value of your house has gone up. Those two seem to talk frequently. It's like they're, they're, they're best buds. I, again, we'll fix the problem. And how do we fix that problem? Two ways. Number one, accountability. There's no accountability within the walls of City Hall. We have to start keeping people accountable. It's not a bad thing. It helps people become better at their job. It helps people grow. Accountability gives training opportunities. It gives opportunities for people to expand their knowledge, to expand uh, their responsibilities, to grow up the ladder. It gives young people an opportunity to help us learn new and more efficient ways. Let's get accountability started. The next way is to, I have been saying this from the day I got elected almost two years ago now. You have to start doing a zero-based budget review. Don't be afraid of it. A zero-based budget review would help find these hidden, hidden accounts 
whether they fell through the cracks or someone closed the door and forgot about it. I d Let's just find them. There's expenses that we still have that we probably don't need. I guarantee you. City of Calgary is doing them. They've saved over $150 million already. Go look at their website. I know one of my counselor colleagues said, oh, well, the, I talked to a counselor. They're not doing them anymore. That's false. Look on their website. City of Calgary, zero-based budget review. And I think it's ZBR is the, uh, is the term they're using for it. This future services fiasco is more proof that we need a zero-based budget review. The paramedic ambulance failure of this administration proves we need a zero-based budget review. I've said enough on this. We need to start changing the way we do things at City Hall. We need to start revamping City Hall, uh, upgrading City Hall rebooting the way we do things at City Hall. When Winnipeg, when Unicity happened, let's call it Unicity, it was to make Winnipeg one great city. All we're doing on a daily basis is causing more division. EPC causes division. Well, we cause division among councillors. We cause division among communities. We're just causing division. Let's get back to making this one great city city.